What's going on guys, this is Captain Jack, and in this tutorial we are going to be talking about Gendistry. For your convenience, if you would like to skip to a certain block, and if you just only want to know about certain things, I have put timestamps in the description below so you can skip to any block that you want to check out. If you've ever bred bees before, you can know that it will be long, mindless, aggravating, and you'll probably want to pull your hair out a whole bunch of different times. So Genistry makes bee breeding generally very, very, very easy. So if you've ever stayed away from bee breeding in the past and you want to get into it, Genistry is a mod for you. Um, there is no more need for seed oil, liquid honey, the squeezer, alvearies or alvary parts, frames, hair tearing out, crossbreeding, apiaries, pipes, acclimatizers, and a whole bunch of different other crap. So uh, this is going to make your life a lot easier and it's going to allow you to get to those great bees really quick. I'm going to be covering a lot of material as fast as humanly possible. So if you miss something or if you want to listen to it again, you do have a pause button and also a rewind button. The industrial apiary is the first machine we're going to talk about and it is the most important machine of genistry. At the price of power and possibly a lot of power, it's going to replace your bee house, apiary, and alviary. This block can be upgraded with uh, four different slots for upgrades. It has no minus 90% productivity reduction as the normal bee house and apiary had. Um, it does not support frames, so you no longer need frames for anything. This block can be controlled by redstone, and also it gives you a whole bunch of detailed information about the bee and about the environmental conditions. The GUI of the industrial apiary is pretty simple. On the left here, you have an internal power storage buffer of 100,000 RF per tick. You have a spot for your princess and a spot for your drone. When you put them together, they'll breed. You have a progress bar here. This will be finishing shortly. You have four spots for up upgrades, which we'll go over soon. And on the left, you have a nine-slot grid for um, products that the bees produce and also leftover drones. Up here you can control redstone. Over here will tell you if there's any problems. So right now the problem says there's no queen, but if I go ahead and put this back in here, it's going to breed together. It's going to give me a check mark and say that everything's okay and they're going to breed as normal. These machines are very versatile when it comes to power usage. They can accept power from multiple mods, including EU, RF, and MJ, and they can accept power from any side. The apiary can be automated from any side, input or output, with uh, multiple mods. So you can use extra utilities, thermal expansion, ender IO, buildcraft, you name it it can use it. One of the best things about this block is the ability to put up to 20 different upgrades into it to make the bee breeding process so much easier. So let's say, for example, I have this Phoenix Queen here. If I hold shift while I mouse over, it'll tell me that it needs to be bred in the nether. It will also tell me in the top right here that it is too cold and it's too humid. So I have to make it more arid and hotter. Okay, so you can do one of two things. You can build these humidifier and dryer upgrades. So in this case, the bee would need a dryer upgrade to make it less humid or you could build the cooler upgrade or the heater upgrade. In this case, we would need the heater to make it hotter, or you can use one of these um, top um, biome emulation upgrades right here. So we know our bee needs to be bred in the nether, so we're gonna make the, take this hell emulation biome, we're gonna put it inside of here, and all of a sudden it's going to be happy, except for the flowers, which we would need to add ourselves and find out um, what flowers the bee needed to breed. Um, so if you want to emulate a biome, let's say ocean, such a pain in the neck to go out there. You used to have to build an apiary in the ocean to breed the stupid things. Now just make an ocean biome emulator and you your bee will think you're in the ocean. Now you can all, also make other upgrades like this, the light upgrade, um, the cost of 5% extra energy consumption. It will make it think that it's always daytime. This one will make it think that there's an open sky above it. So it's essentially the cave dwelling trait. Um, this is the seal upgrade, which makes it so your bees will still breed and work during the rain. This one will catch pollen, the sieve upgrade. This one will um, increase the flowering and pollination by 20% at the cost of 10% energy. This one will stop pollen and flowers from generating at the cost of 30% energy. And this one will increase the territory of your bees, um, whatever its default is, by 50% at the cost of some more power there. Now, the most important upgrades for you are going to be this one. The automation upgrade, which is a 10% um, increase in energy consumption, but it will automate your apiary, and I'll tell you about that in just one second. The second thing is a production upgrade, and this is a little bit later down the line once you've got some good bees established, but this is going to increase the base production of your bee by 20% and the energy consumption by another 20%. This one will make it so if you have ignoble bees, and if you know anything about bees, you know that pristine stock will not die out, and ignoble bees do have a chance to die out. So at the cost of 100% increased energy consumption, your bees will never decay if they are ignoble stock. They will always stay alive. 
really won't recommend this one since it's so easy to get pristine stock bees. So here's an example of the automation upgrade. Right now I'm 85% complete and since I have the automation upgrade, what it's going to do is once the prince, once the queen dies and makes the drones, it's going to automatically take the princess and the drones and shove them back into this area here. And thus it automates the entire process. And we'll talk a little bit more about how you pipe this stuff out and how you keep your queen and your princess in here later. This also has eight production upgrades in it. So these bees are working overtime. So what kind of power does this consume? 94 RF per tick, okay? If we were to take this upgrade and put it inside this block here, we would significantly increase our RF per tick, okay? So you're up to almost 200 RF per tick, um, completely unnecessary for this upgrade. Um, but these, eh, once you have a good amount of power going, 94 um, RF per tick is really not that big of a deal, okay? So automation upgrade is really great. I'll just wait one second so you can see what happens and then we'll move on. There we go, died, princess goes back, drone goes back, the start process starts all over again. Once you get excess drones, they'll just fill up over here and we have a way to pipe those out later. All right, now how do we breed new bees and mutate them? That's where the Mutatron, Advanced Mutatron, Mutagen Producer, and Labware come into play. You are going to need a lot of Labware. It's gonna require four glass panes, one diamond, and it's going to give you 16 Labware per craft make a lot. The first thing we need to do before we mutate any bees with Genistry is build a mutagen producer and that is this block right here. A mutagen producer will take one of various different types of fuels which you can check out on the wiki because I won't mention them all here and when you put them into the GUI of this machine it will turn them into mutagen. Now you can use redstone, blocks of redstone, um, eulorium is probably the easiest and best one to use if you have excess of it. It will give you one bucket of mutagen um, per squeeze or if you have a lot of uranium-235 laying around that will make quite a bit of mutagen. So this is going to produce mutagen. It's going to go into the internal buffer over here unless you have it pumping out. Now the mutagen producer will automatically pump out to a mutatron or an advanced mutatron if it is adjacent to one, but in this example, I have it being pumped out with ender fluid conduit, and it's going over here to the mutatron. All right, so why on earth do you need a mutatron in the first place? Can't you just breed two kinds of different bees inside an industrial apiary and get a new outcome? No, they will not mutate, and that is fantastic. You do not want that. You are going to need the mutatron in order to force mutations, which is also another fantastic um, thing about this mod, okay? So in this case, I have power, I have mutagen over here, I have my labware up top here, so you can see that you kind of need labware up top. You're going to need one labware for every one of these transactions. So here I have a common and a cultivated, which is giving me a diligent queen. Now, the mutatron has a distinct disadvantage to the advanced mutatron, and I'm actually not going to recommend that you even make this block, except that you use it in the crafting recipe of the next block. Just skip right to the advanced mutatron, as long as you have the laser required to build the pattern for it. The mutatron will cause a random uh, mutation, but it will cause a mutation if one can happen. Uh, but in this case, common and cultivated can either produce a diligent or noble bee. So you actually don't know which one you're going to get. So if I take this one out, bam, the same combination actually gave me a noble queen. And this one, who knows what's going to happen. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. All right, I got another diligent. Okay, so you really don't know what you're going to get, but you do know that you are going to get something. Now, I'll make another quick note before I go on here that you can also breed trees. So you put your tree here, put your pollen here, it will do the same thing. This whole mod works with trees as well, and I believe it works with butterflies on top of that. Um, but really, before you get into tree beating, you need to start have, having some kind of bees around a little bit. Um, and probably most people are going to be wanting to know about uh, bees. So I'm not really going to mention um, tree bee breeding or uh, butterfly breeding again in this one. Just know that everything from now on, all these machines, will either take the saplings and the pollen or the bees and the princesses and so on and so forth. All right, now the advanced mutatron is really the block you're after in this mod. It's probably the second best, if uh, you will, block or machine in this whole mod. And it allows you to pick your forced mutation. So two great things all rolled up in one. It's going to require some genetics labware up top here, 
some mutagen, a lot of power, and it's going to require two bees that have a valid breeding option. Okay, so it will not allow a bee to go in here that is not a valid. So I can try to put this in here all I want. Click, click, click. It's not letting me put it in there. If you put one in there, it will give you all the possible outcomes of this bee, which is great. So if I do this, nope, not letting me. Nope, not letting me. I know that those two combinations don't make anything, but the common and cultivated will either make one of the two of these. So in order to pick which one you want, all you gotta do is click it. It will consume genetics labware, a bunch of mutagen, take a whole crap ton of power, and it will make the breed that you want. So if you're looking for a specific bee and you wanna know how to get it, simply mouse over it, hold R, find the recipe, common cultivated equals noble. Completely ignore this 10% chance because that whole thing is completely eliminated. It is going to be a 100% chance of mutation unless your bee dies. That's right, your bee can die. Sometimes, and it's happened to me only three times on the server that I've been playing on um, out of many, 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 many mutations. So it doesn't happen very often. Sometimes when you try to squish bees together and you're playing with all these genetics, you end up killing your bee and you get this stuff called genetic waste. It's really unfortunate. It happens. Um, but if you're smart about your breeding, which I'll explain later, then uh, this shouldn't really be that big of a detriment. It's just a really big inconvenience. All right, before we move on, I just want to cover three different uh, tools that Dentistry adds into the game. The Industrial Grafter, the Scoop Creator, MX100 Turbo, and the Pollen Collection Kit. Um, these are really awesome. They don't die. They use RF as charge, and they have a limited number of charges, but you can just recharge them to use them 100 times over again. Uh, basically, you just take them, put them in any device that can possibly charge something. Um, so, do to do anything like this. Or you can use uh, IC2, great, fantastic. These blocks are awesome. Um, the Scooperator is probably the most important one, um, just because, again, that's probably what everyone's going to be using. Um, Scooperator, you can just hit stuff, and it will uh, break things, and uh, you can get your bees. And you can see that it has doo -doo -doo, 499 charges left. So we have 500 charges, 500 scoops for every single time. So now, instead of making like 100 scoops and going out into the wild, you only have to make one Scooperator, and then you can get all the bees. Um, the other amazing thing that you can do with the Scoop Raider MX100 Turbo is that you can shift, right click, and you can take the hive. Yes, that's right, you can pick up a hive and move them. So just like that, that is fantastic. Now, as I exit my secret door here, we can see the industrial grafter, and I do have some spectacles on, okay? So I can see the uh, trees that have been uh, mutated, so I can take the grafter, and uh, it just clears everything, basically. So it's, yeah, it's way overkill, okay? And it has a ton of uses. Uh, way more than a regular grafter and a harvest and all that crap. A regular grafter would harvest one block at a time. Massive pain in the butt. The other thing that we have is the pollen collection kit. And this is a single use item and all you need to do is go up to... Ooh, 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 ooh. The death bloom thing. All you need to do is go up to a leaf, right click, and you will get the pollen of that particular tree. 100%. So, three pretty cool tools. All right, next we have the sampler, imprinter, and transposer. These are getting into uh, the itty bitty gritty depths of dentistry and uh, modifying the traits of your bees. You're gonna wanna make a blank uh, gene sample and uh, probably you'll never need more than a stack of them because they are reusable, which is fantastic. And also a bunch of genetic templates. Now those require a diamond and they're a little bit more expensive. Um, and I'll tell you what we'll be looking for um, in our first bee breeds in just one second. The genetic sampler will basically take any bee, so if I take some cultivated drones and I throw them in here, which is the bee slot or the tree slot as you can see, it's going to randomly select one of 13 traits on the bee and put it into one of these little gene samples, okay? So lifespan shortest, okay? And that actually auto it out into this box here. Um, you can put a stack of drones here and it will continually um, breed them up, um, provided that they are ejecting into an adjacent inventory or being pulled out by a different mod. Again, I'll show you how to do that in just one second. Um, but this is killing the bee, so you will not get your bee back once you do this. So it's important to have a bunch of different drones before you try to do this. And uh, kind of what you're after is the species trait um, first for these bees. So you'll end up getting a lot of these things, but again, I said you could reuse them. So you can take them once you're done with them. If they have traits that you don't actually want to use, you can throw them in some sort of furnace and they'll just empty out and you'll get the blank gene samples back. You can put them back inside your genetic sampler and be done with it. So you can see here that I have a bunch of different traits, fertility two, species meadows, which is fantastic, um, cave dwelling false, which sucks, um, fertility two, which is 
eh, no effect, shorter lifespan, and so on and so forth. So there are up to 13 different traits, okay? And if I open up the Bealizer and Bealize a B, you can kind of see what all of the traits are, and some of them are on the second page here, so climate, humidity, um, during the day, during the night, raining, cave dwelling, so on and so forth. And it makes it a little bit easier to see once you make the genetic templates. So what you're going to want to do is basically look for the species of every bee that you breed up to. So if you breed a, um, let's say, meadows and forest and get a common, you want to get that common species so that um, if for whatever reason you lose your commons during a breed, you can always go back and imprint a new bee with common. So how do you imprint them? You're going to take this genetic template and you're going to imprint uh, the species onto it or add the species to it, okay? So you put it inside a crafting grid, put the um, desired gene sample inside, and it will tell you that there's one of 13 chromosomes inside of the genetic template. Select it here, it will give you back this gene sample. Again, you don't lose these things, so don't make too many of them. Um, and it will tell you if you shift click or shift hover over um, what little uh, chromosomes, as they call them, you have filled out. So the only one filled out this in this one is species, and there are still um, 12 more that can be filled out, okay? So if I grab a bunch of different ones, let's say, Temperature tolerance, humidity tolerance, no effect, cave dwelling, fertility, uh, ba, 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 got meadows already, lifespan, flowering, a um, bunch of different stuff. I can take that same template and I can add more to it and I can add a whole bunch at the same time, which is pretty great. And that will fill out 8 out of 13. And I can take that, get my gene samples back. Okay, and it will tell me now all the ones that are missing. So I thought I grabbed flowering. I did add this one in here. Okay, and when you have all 13 filled out, that 8 of 13 chromosomes will say 13 of 13. And it will also be green, which we'll um, need for a future machine. Next, we have the genetic imprinter, which will take the genetic template that we built out of our genes. And it will allow them to go inside a machine, along with some labware, to basically imprint a princess or a drone or trees again and uh, it will make this drone or queen or princess into whatever my template has so the missing um, effects or chromosomes will just not get applied at all so the bee will keep its territory tolerance speed flowers and uh, diurnal nocturnal it will keep all those traits whatever it has and uh, it will imprint, it will be species, it will not be cave dwelling, it will have no effect, shorter lifespan, it will, it will give me everything that's in gray here, okay? So I'm going to take my B, I'm going to put it here. As soon as I place this here, it's going to start the process. It's going to take a little bit, it's going to take this B, and it's going to breed a new B, and you will get to keep your template, which is pretty cool. All right, so now I have a new Meadows Princess, and all of the um, chromosomes that are on this genetic temp template that uh, I have filled out have been applied to this B, and I can use it in further bee breeding processes. The genetic transposer will allow me to copy either genetic template or a gene sample um, with a cost of some labware and some RF. So all you need to do is take the one um, that you want to be, um, get the copy of, place it up here, uh, put a blank one here, and it will come out here. So let's see that with a gene sample. So I want to copy the meadow species. I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to put them up there, and it's going to give me another one of these meadow species. Now, if I wanted to copy a template, all I would have to do is I would have to take a blank template, which I can't put here when that's there. So I'm going to take a blank template, put it here, put this one is only species cobalt. Okay, so I'm looking for the just one trait. I'm going to put that up there. It's going to copy this, and it's going to give me a filled out version of that, and it's going to be species cobalt. Okay, so if you had all 13 filled out, you could duplicate um, your genetic template that you already have. Um, this will be really important um, later on, so you want to get all the best um, abilities and traits on a bee except for the species. You want to make a master template that you can um, basically inoculate all the bees with all the best um, traits except for the species um, so that when you breed them together, they will have epic results. All right, so if you're feeling a little bit lost right now, please don't. I'm going to wrap this all up in a real practical session right at the end. Um, first, we're going to talk about two more things. We're going to talk about covers and these things called uh, DNA extractors, protein liquefiers, and the genetic replicator, which all work hand in hand and kind of completely separate from any of the other things that we've looked at already. This block is a DNA extractor and simply place extra drones, which you will have a lot of extra drones, okay? Place them right inside here along with some labware. I think it consumes one labware per five operations. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. Um, it's going to use some power, which I'm out of right now, and it's going to create this stuff called liquid DNA. 
you'll need that for this replicator. You'll also need um, liquid protein. And to make protein, you need any kind of raw meat. So you can use um, raw beef, raw pork chops, um, uncooked chicken. It can't be cooked. You can use raw meat blocks from MFR. A um, bunch of power. It's going to um, craft up some uh, protein. And you can either store it in tanks for later use. Or these two blocks will automatically eject um, their contents into the replicator if they're side by side, just like this. The genetic replicator is a really powerful block in that it can create bees out of nothing but the DNA and the liquid protein that we have just made. This is a way to get infinite queens, princesses, so that uh, you can continue your bee breeding domination. Um, the genetic template must have all 13 to 13 traits filled out in order to successfully recreate a bee. It will not even start the process if you don't have all 13 filled out. And created bees will always be ignoble stock, so they will eventually die out because they have been made in a um, laboratory, basically. So what you want to do is you want to take a completely filled out um, genetic template, like the one seen here. So my species is cobalt. I have a whole bunch of different um, chromosomes imprinted onto this. All you have to do is put it here, and it will start the process. It will consume a ton of freaking power. Um, all these machines consume a lot of power. It will take a little bit of liquid DNA, a um, little bit of protein. Yeah, I think it's like five buckets of protein, something like that, or five, maybe five DNA, liquid DNA, I'm not sure. Um, and it will basically create a brand new queen for you, okay? So once you have the queen, you just start running it through the breeding process. It will die off. You'll get the princess, you get the drone, and so on and so forth. Um, so here we go. We have a cobalt queen. It is ignoble stock as compared to pristine, so it will die out. So just be careful that you might lose it. All right, so for some reason, um, you're not very good at creating mob farms, or if you're not quite there yet, um, creating liquid protein is going to be a probably pretty daunting task because it requires a pretty big setup, um, unless you have another way of getting some sort of raw animal meats. Um, you might not be able to get enough protein to make this. So this whole process is not actually necessary. Um, to use from this bot, and I actually personally have never used it on the server that I play on um, because I have quarries which are bringing in a whole ton of rocky princesses. So I actually have plenty of princesses to play with. I don't uh, ever run out of them, um, but if I did and if I didn't have a quarry, this would absolutely be the best way to go. I would want to breed the bees together, get those drones, try to get that species so that I could make a brand new pristine stock species of uh, or bee of that species. All right, very quickly, we have three different kinds of covers that can be installed on most uh, Genistry machines. The only one that can only be installed on the Industrial Apiary is the Error Sensor. You can install an import or an inject cover onto any uh, Genistry machine and will essentially kind of automate it in a way. Um, the item import cover, just uh, right-click to apply, shift right-click to take off. Um, this will pull items from an inventory into the block automatically. The, X, the eject cover will basically just eject them right out once they're done into another JSON inventory. So when these are done, it's exporting all of the contents into this block here. So pretty simple. In this example, I have a genetic sampler. I have uh, blank genes needed and also some labware and even drones, okay? So I have some drones in here, but since I can't do anything and there's a full stack in there, they're not going anywhere. Um, but if I was to put this in here, it's going to suck it out immediately, drop it into the machine, suck that out immediately, and it's going to fill it to its maximum capacity um, right here. The drones, if I take these out, it's going to pop right back in because they fill in from the chest and so on and so forth. And then once stuff is done, which this is loaded with gene samples, it's just going to start ejecting them automatically um, right out and into this chest. So that's the... Uh, item eject cover and the item import cover. All right, so the air sensor cover is pretty cool. You can just right click and apply it. And if you um, look in the bottom left there, it says that it will emit a redstone signal if any error is detected. You can also click with an empty hand to change the error. So I can cycle through. If uh, it's in a hostile environment, it'll send off a redstone signal and so on and so forth. They're all very self-explanatory. Okay, and you can cycle through that whole bit there. Shift right click to take it back off. Um, here I just set up a really simple example of uh, basically how it works. Um, practically, I'm not sure if this is a really useful tool um, it, when, in big setups um, when you have heavy automation going, um, but I'll just show you how it works real quick. Okay, so I have on the right here, this is the flower detection, in the middle the rain detection, and on the left the sunlight detection. Um, so if there is no sunlight, the yellow one will go off. So if I change it to nighttime, the yellow one goes off. Oh, 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 there we go. Yellow goes off. It's angry. It's not working. It says there's no daytime. Okay, so I change it back today. Let's say it's raining and I turn on the rain. 
the blue one will go off because it's raining and the bee cannot work in the rain so there is an error okay if I remove the flower eventually the bee will detect that there are no flowers and to make it happen faster I can do that and it will send off a red error so if it's at nighttime or if it's raining and there's no flowers you have two errors and for some reason just so you know this doesn't quite work properly where I have it to midnight the rain goes off and or one of the two it just I don't know it, it takes some sort of priority if it's not raining let's see this change there we go now it changes that if I turn the rain back on ah, uh, there we go it's, it's just really strange but anyways that's how the uh, the air sensor cover works alright so we're finally at the practical part of this tutorial which is probably where you are going to learn the most and I'll hopefully wrap this all up um, and put it into a cohesive explanation of what you really are after when you are breeding bees. Um, now this setup is not necessarily ideal. It's just basically all the blocks here. Um, we're not even going to use the liquefier replicator or transposer at all. Like I said, um, if you got quarries, they're completely optional. Um, you do have to do a few more steps, which you'll see in a second. Um, but again, this is not the best way or the only way. This is just um, the way that I found to be the most helpful. If you have a better way, please feel free to uh, post it in the comments below. All right, this is Captain Jack's species acquisition model. Start with at least four industrial apiaries to create drones. Okay, pause. The reason for the four is because um, generally what you want to do is you want to breed up to um, uh, majestic and imperial first. And in order to get there, the branch of uh, bees kind of splits in the middle. And so you want to kind of breed everything twice. So four is kind of the ideal number that I went with um, for the mutation station. You can do literally whatever you want. Um, find four bees and try to get the fertility times three trait. That means it will drop three drones every time it's bred. Imprint fertility three onto every bee species you wish to breed. This will allow you to acquire more drones and smash into the sampler for more traits. To start, you'll be looking mainly for the species trait. Once you have the species trait, save it on a, ge on a genetic template so it can never be lost. All caps lock, very important. Never breed further until you have acquired the species trait of the bee that you're currently on. Okay, I added an extra exclamation point there. Um, once you have the new species, use the rocky princesses from a quarry or use a replicator to create a new queen of that species and continue to move forward in the breeding process. All right, so here's the process that you're going to want to follow. Open up your advanced mutatron. Let's say you've got a cultivated and common, which are pretty early on, and I've used this example already. Throw some labware in there, select the ones you want. We're going to go with the noble line. Once we have the noble queen, okay, so this is going to make a queen, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put it inside an industrial apiary. You're going to want to have four lifespan upgrades into it, um, so it decreases the lifespan of the bee drastically, and then you're going to, going to want to bead the bee. Once you breed it, you're going to get the princess and the drone, and then we'll move on. All right, so now the operation is completed, and we have a noble princess and two noble drones. So we can already tell that the fertility is not really as high as we want it to. So we're going to take these out and we're going to bealize them just so I can show you that the fertility is only two and it's got a short lifespan, slow production and so on and so forth. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to get the maximum number of drones from the noble species so that it will give us uh, more chances to get the species from the genetic sampler. So what we want to do is we want to create a template. I don't know what that is. Um, that has a collection of the best chromosomes that we have found so far, okay? So this is an example of a whole bunch of uh, pretty good uh, chromosomes, okay? And you'll notice that the only one missing is species, okay? We, we want one of these blank templates with everything except for the species, okay? And we want to put that onto all of our new bees, okay? So you can see that there's fertility four. Um, the speed is fastest, which is extremely difficult to get. You'll have fast for a really long time. Um, basically, all we care about is fertility right now and uh, shortest lifespan. We, we want these things to die real quick. I have longest lifespan on here because that is what you'll eventually want for your high productivity bees that are you're done with, that you're just having there to produce resources. So you're going to take the noble princess and then one noble drone and run this through this process here and you are going to make sure that they have an extremely high fertility. So as soon as these are done, we'll get back and we'll keep going. 
All right, so both the drone and the princess are both done. And if we beelize them, we can see that they now have four times fertility and they have all these fantastic traits on them. So that's really good. Now the next step is drone production. You want to have a few apiaries set aside with an automation upgrade and a max, the maximum amount of lifespan upgrades, which is four times. You want to put these in here, and then what you want to do is you just want to run a ton of cycles. A ton of cycles with the noble princesses. Get as many drones as possible. And then once you have all of those drones extra, um, always saving one for the next breed, you want to start bringing over nobles, bringing them to your genetic sampler, throw in the nobles, and the thing that you're after is the species. You want to get the species. And you have to do this as many times as you possibly need to do it in order to get that species. Okay, so this auto ejected into here. Okay, so let's say we now have gotten the noble species. What we're going to do is we're going to put the noble species on one of these genetic templates and save it. Now, no matter what happens, we never lose that species. And that is extremely important because what you're going to find out is as you move through bees, you're going to need um, bees that maybe you thought you were already beyond. So you're going to need diligent bees um, to make like uh, the sweetened um, and sugary princesses and so on and so forth. So you're going to find that um, you're going to keep needing to go back to, to other bees. So what you want to do is create um, a compilation of all these things. And I actually found that these um, compartments are pretty good for that because you can make tabs, you can label them. So I've named these species. I've named this one princesses. So this would be where I keep all my rocky princesses that came in from my quarry. Um, I have a traits tab. So if I wanted to put um, traits in here, which I don't have any, you could put them in there. Um, honeycombs I could store in here. Um, it, applied Energistics is really better. but um, So I want to take all of my species. So where is it? I got... Oop, oop, oop. I got my noble species. I'm going to put it in here, and bam, now I have that forever. So let's say I want to um, go down another line. I want to take my noble species. Let's grab one of my rocky princesses that are really crappy, okay? We're going to come over here to the advanced... Uh, no, we're not. We're going to go over here to this. Um, what you'd want to do is you want to first... Nah, just make the species, okay? Um, noble species, okay? So you see all these are missing. And so this is my traits with everything except species. This is my um, trait box with everything, or only the species. Um, I want to put this rocky princess in here, and I'm going to create a brand new noble princess. All right, so here's my new noble princess. I just made it out of a rocky princess, and it is pristine stock. So again, if you got a quarry and you just want to use those rocky princesses, you can actually bypass... Um, the need to use the uh, replicator entirely and the need for protein, which is, eh, let's face it, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So if we beelize this, you'll notice that eh, fertility sucks. So we need to throw it back through this one again, which is um, what creates the extra steps. This We wouldn't need to do this if we just made the bee out of nothing. Um, but again, you get that pristine stock, and it's a couple extra steps. So to me, it's not a very big deal. If you got the resources, go for it. Um, but that's basically the process. Um, so real quickly, just in summary, um, you want to find a bee. You want to breed it to what you want. You want to imprint it with the highest fertility that you could possibly get. You want to throw it in a drone production industrial apiary with maximum lifespan. You see I have three extra already. And an automation upgrade so it continues to make them even while you're not around. You want to pull your drones out. You want to go over to the genetic sampler. You want to get that species, imprint it onto a template, keep the template forever, and if you want to create a new species of uh, from that template, just go ahead and throw it inside your genetic imprint, and uh, you just keep going and going and going. So find that bee that you want and go get it. All right, so that's about it for this tutorial. Um, just want to show you one last thing to try to maybe convince you that bees are awesome. Um, this is a server FTB Infinity Evolved, uh, not hard mode, that I have been playing on. Um, already have a bunch of bees going. This is my Oop, my little set setup that I got going here. Um, I've discovered about 45 species so far. This is my uh, production wall here. I have a bunch of uh, Demondi queens. I have s uh, six of them producing stuff. I have Eulorium drones. I have oh, more Eulorium drones. I have Sweetened, Blutonium, Cyanite, um, Rural, which are actually making wheat for me. Um, I have secluded, which who knows even what these are making. Uh, mellow combs. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. They're making nether quartz. 
uh, sugar, you're making sugar for me, imperial, royal jelly, aurora, gold nuggets, um, what else do I got? Um, nothing really, so I'm just kind of expanding here. Um, just to show you, um, I got um, Demondi Queens roughly 24 hours ago, and I have 17,000 diamond shards, okay? And also bear in mind that these things only have two production upgrades in them. Oh, there's another one, okay? Um, you don't need the full eight, so this, these are not really consuming a lot of energy, considering the power of production that I have right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, see how many diamonds I got. So this is 24 hours worth of um, bee production. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Okay, holy crap. Okay, I now have 2,000 diamonds. Okay, so if you're not sold on the idea of bees, um, if you weren't before, hopefully you are now. Um, sugar... There we go. I have 1,500 sugar, also 24 hours. Um, some of these other ones aren't that productive, so I have 63 cyanite. Um, wheat and combs, I have 1,000. I actually got like six of them since I started this. Um, that's basically 1,000 wheat, so I don't need any sort of wheat farm, so that's fantastic. Um, plutonium, um, there's my allorium, got powdery, cyanite, cocoa, lapis, iron, diamond, copper all sorts of stuff bees are freaking awesome if there is a resource in the game that you need bees can probably make them you can make wither skeleton skulls from bees so hold on this is the last thing i'm going to show you wither skeleton skulls wither fragments come from withering bees okay enough said you can get just about anything from bees genistry makes it super easy to get there hope you love this mod as much as i do hope you love bees as much as i do um, if you want to learn how to do bees the old way and watch about eh, two and a half hours worth of tutorials split up into seven parts, I will link those in the description. Um, it is very long, so I've condensed it all into just a little bit more than a uh, half an hour for your viewing pleasure. Um, hope, hope you liked the tutorial. Um, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment if you got a comment about it, ask questions please. Um, I sometimes will answer them. And uh, as always, guys, Captain Jack out and stay poised.